Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 26 beta one released a few days ago and iOS 26 beta one re-release came out a day or so ago. iOS 18.5 released to the public over a month ago as well. But there's even more to talk about since the iOS 26 beta one is out what's new video. We'll talk about some Apple news, some features since there's quite a few in iOS 26 and we'll also talk about the experience and why you probably shouldn't install it on your main device. We'll talk not only about my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll, where at the time of this video, there's over 26,000 votes and 413 comments. I've gone through all the comments to determine what the update is like for most people. So be sure to stick around toward the end of the video where I go over some of your comments as well. Now this year, we know that iOS 26 no longer supports the iPhone XS. Apple has just recently added it to their vintage product list. So if you scroll down here on their list, go to iPhone, you'll see that they now have XS and XS Max. I would imagine they'll add the iPhone XR soon, but you can see it's now considered vintage. So that doesn't mean you won't get support for it and you won't get some security updates, but iOS 26 is no longer supporting it. Now, of course, we know iOS 26 brings a lot of new features. And one thing it's getting soon is flight boarding pass enhancements. Apple has listed 10 participating airlines who will allow you to use the new feature. So it will allow you to get through different things with your boarding pass a little bit easier just using the Apple wallet. Also, Apple is adding digital ID support to web browsers with iOS 26. So that's something that should enhance security. And I showed some of this in a different video. I may not have released it yet by the time of this video, but if we go down to our Safari settings here in our apps, down at the very bottom of the Safari settings, you'll see advanced tracking and fingerprinting protection for all browsing. So this is something that's new as well. So they're really enhancing security again with Safari. Now, of course, with the release of iOS 26, we have a new design. They're changing the radius of the icons, redesigning a lot of the OS, and Apple released an update for their Apple design resources. I'll link this in the description, but you can see iOS and iPadOS 26 sketch library, as well as the app icon template. They've changed the actual radius of some of the corners and some of the updated look. There's also a ton of different videos available online on YouTube. If you want to see what Apple expects as far as designing something, if you're a developer or you just want to see how they designed this. So some great resources there. Within the TV app, we have an all new F1 haptic movie trailer for this new F1 movie from Apple with Brad Pitt and done with Lewis Hamilton. This is something I haven't experienced before and definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. Hit play while you're watching your phone and it will start to vibrate the phone along with the movie. So as the F1 car is driving down the track and make some shifts, you actually feel it. So because they have the Taptic engine, they're utilizing that to give you sort of a more realistic experience. So definitely something that's unique and worth checking out if you haven't already. Now with iOS 26, being that it's currently a developer beta, I would not recommend you install this on your main device as there's going to be issues. This is typical every time we have a new beta and many people have asked me about this saying it's not good, there's issues with it, and there's going to be issues with it, especially with the first few betas. Once the public beta is out, it seems to improve a bit, but it's still a beta and still a work in progress. Apple knows this and they've listed a lot of the issues in the release notes. We'll talk about that in a moment, but many of you have asked me how to downgrade if you've already installed it. If you go to my channel, you'll see a video called how to downgrade iOS 18 to 17 without losing any data. This is the same process for iOS 26. So be sure to check that out if you wanted to downgrade as it's a simple process, but you may have to restore your phone and make sure you had a backup before you installed the update. Now, if you are using this, make sure that you actually submit feedback. If you're having issues, the feedback app is there. Apple allows you to use the pre-release early to try it out, but they want your feedback if it's something they're not aware of. So make sure you're doing that if you haven't already. I look through and if I'm having an issue and it's not listed under the release notes, I'll report it in feedback. Now, other people are complaining about notification readability, but I find this is really more to do with the wallpaper you're using. If we scroll down here, you see I can read these just fine with liquid glass. If I scroll these notifications up a little bit, I find that it's not really a problem. Some people have an issue reading them where the contrast isn't right, but for me, it seems to be just fine. So I'm not really seeing a whole lot of issues there. Also, many people were wondering about Apple releasing a Siri update as well. There was a great interview this week from Joanna Stern getting more detail about the Siri delay, and those Siri features are actually coming in 2026, according to Apple. 
Mark Gurman is saying to expect the Siri updates around iOS 26.4 next year. This seems likely, and I don't mind as long as Apple really works on it to get it right. I'd rather have them wait, get it to be the best it can, and then release it. In the meantime, I'll use what I have. I personally don't use Siri a whole lot, but let me know if that's something that's major to you. Now, as far as new features, there's more to talk about, but the first thing I wanted to talk about is Apple re-released iOS 26 Beta 1. It was only for the iPhone 15 and 16 models, and they told us why in the feedback app. So within feedback, at the top of the release notes, it says fixed. Some iPhone 15 and iPhone 16 models may show a low battery symbol and be unable to start up after updating to iOS 26 Beta 1. The only way to fix it before was to restore the phone. So now it looks like that's fixed. I actually had some odd issues when I had low battery as well. A reboot thankfully fixed it, but some people had big, bigger issues where they had to reinstall the whole OS. But it looks like they've resolved that. Something else they've mentioned in the release notes is that iOS 26 can reserve space for software updates. So that's something that should help in the future if maybe you're running low on storage, it can reserve that by itself. Something else they've updated has to do with Android. If you're switching from an Android phone to an iPhone, they're now making it easier to transfer an eSIM. So they'll make it easier this direction, hopefully they'll make it easier going the other direction as well. But at least that's a step in the right direction where you can now transfer an eSIM easier without going to your carrier. Another thing that was found in the code of iOS 26 was by my friend Steve Mosier on X. You can see it looks like AirPods Pro 3 must be coming soon if it's in iOS 26 Beta 1. So maybe we'll get those later this year, maybe around the launch of iPhone 17. We don't really know, but at least we know that they're working on them. Many people have been waiting for those as well. Something else Steve found in iOS 26 includes the option for the weather app and widget to let you know about severe weather alerts for predicted travel. You can enable significant locations and routes in your location access as well. So if you're not using significant location, you won't be able to use that feature. That's something some people recommend you disable. I personally actually leave it enabled as I use it. But if you go into privacy and security, go into location services, then you go to the bottom. You'll see that we have system services. And then under your system services, you have significant locations and routes. As long as you have that enabled, you should be able to use that. And then also in the, the severe weather notifications are in the weather app itself. So if you're using weather, that's something we've had for a while, it seems. But we actually have the option to use those severe location alerts and things like that. So notifications, and you'll see severe weather alerts. That's something that I like to use, again, significant locations. And I find that's very helpful, especially when maybe there's a storm coming or something along those lines. Something else as far as features that have returned back to iOS 26 that people have wanted back for a while is if we go into photos, go to edit the photo, then we go to the option here at the top to mark up, then go to the plus button, we now have the loop back. So you can add the loop back and now we have that option. So if you wanna use it, you've got the loop here where it's easier to see things and they finally brought that back. So hopefully that helps many of you that have wanted it back. Music also seems to have translations and lyrics and they did announce this, but I wasn't seeing it yet. So some of them seem to have it. Let's see if we can find it here. Let me turn this down. We'll go into our lyrics here. And if the lyrics are in a different language, you'll have an option here where it actually will allow you to translate it. Now, I haven't seen this myself, but many people are now seeing it. So let me know if you're seeing it in your music. Also something that's new in the phone app, within the phone app under voicemails, we now have the option to report spam or add directly to contact. So this is a nice update where we can just report it as spam and never hear from them again. Now, Apple is listening, whether that's through feedback or different issues they're having. They've sort of just proved this with the latest beta release notes here, where they talked about fixing issues with iPhone 15 and 16, and they did it very quickly, considering that it's a busy week for them with WWDC. They've also listened to us with the iPhone, with the AirPods updates. While they haven't given us a dedicated update button, they did make it much easier if you want to try out the beta by going into it here. Let's wait for it to connect. So we'll try that again. So if we go into the AirPods settings, go to the very bottom, go to AirPods beta updates, we now have the option for AirPods beta updates. Instead of going into a separate developer app, connecting to Xcode, we can just turn this on and then update. Now, hopefully they'll also give us an update button itself and we'll see that in the future. But again, I believe Apple's listening, they're improving their software, but they've been working hard for three years or so on this design and it will continue to get better. So 
I really think they're moving in the right direction here. I know not everyone likes liquid glass, but I think the listen as far as the readability and legibility of things and the overall design and animations are really nice so far. So let me know what you think though. I know many people have used the feedback app and have Apple reach out to them and ask them different issues and see if things were resolved. So be sure to submit feedback, let them know what's going on, even if you just don't like designs. Now this week, Apple did release something else with a new Safari technology preview. The latest version here you can see is version 221 and it's available for macOS Tahoe and macOS Sequoia. So if you're testing that out, this is available now. One thing I would expect maybe as soon as this week I've talked about for a while is iOS 18.5.1. It's been well over a month since we had an update and the only downloadable version right now is iOS 18.5 as Apple stopped signing iOS 18.4.1. So at this point, I think it would be great to get maybe some bug fixes, get things more stable and hopefully see that. We could also see iOS 18.6 beta one fairly soon as well, maybe sometime early this week. And then also of course, in a couple weeks, iOS 26 beta two. Typically it takes about two weeks before this, the second beta is released. So maybe on Monday, the 23rd, we could see something like that. And then maybe the following week or by the end of the week, we'll have the public beta. It just depends on how stable it is. So Apple actually said early July, but in the past, sometimes it's been the end of June as well. Now with the iOS 18.5 experience, like I mentioned before, it definitely has some bugs. I've talked about that at length. So hopefully we'll see some sort of update. But with iOS 26, there's definitely some bugs, but again, this is to be expected compared to what you would expect with a public release. So iOS 26 beta one has been having some issues and I looked at what many of you had to say. And I think the number one thing has to do with the overall heat of the device. It was definitely getting very hot, especially the first day, but after a couple days, it seems to calm down a bit. That also affects the battery life. Battery drain is quite severe for some people. And also there's stuttering reboots. Some apps don't work properly as developers haven't submitted their app updates to be compatible with iOS 26. Typically this happens every year with things such as banking apps, but don't expect everything to work properly yet. This is an early beta and this is very typical. Now the liquid glass design overall, while I like it, does seem to have some contrast issues depending on your wallpaper. And again, this is an early release, so they're going to work on this and refine this before it's released to the public. Some people have issues with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. However, I really haven't experienced that. However, as far as heat and thermals, well, like I mentioned, it's definitely warmer than the public release and that's to be expected. It's doing things in the background and Apple's of course, not focused on stability and heat and battery life. They're focused on making the features updated. Then they work on that typically. So with the thermal camera on iOS 26 beta one, we're at around 93 degrees Fahrenheit on iOS 18.5. We're at around 87 to 88 degrees Fahrenheit, not really a huge difference overall and it seems to be doing just fine right now but that's with the beta one re-release that doesn't mean it won't heat up again again it's completely normal at this stage definitely things going on in the background and it's not something to be concerned about really if you're concerned about it i would highly recommend you do not install this on your main device either way i would put it on a secondary device as it's not completely stable at this point apple is warned against that i'm warning you as well if you're having issues or concerned about it, I would wait until it comes out with the public beta or wait until the public release, especially if it's crucial to your business. Now, as far as the overall performance, well, at times it's very fast and fluid, but then it's stuttery from time to time, whether that's on a new device or an old device, such as the iPhone 11. So you'll see it is a little bit stuttery there as I'm scrolling again, they're not refined yet. They're still working on it. And I would expect by the time it's released, it would be much, much better. Again, it's very early on. So you can see what it looks like opening up apps, opening up cru crucial apps here, going into camera seems to be okay. So it's doing much better than I would expect for an early beta, but it still has some issues. Like I mentioned, I have had it respring about three times. That means it reboots the screen, but doesn't reboot the entire device. Again, it has issues. It's slow and stuttery and things such as Google maps, but it seems better than iOS 18.5 for me. When it comes to overall battery life, well, I've been running it on my main device and I have extra devices just in case, and it's okay, but battery is not very good at all. So if we go into battery here, you'll see it took a second to open. 
You'll see battery health as we take a look. We're at 100% capacity with 228 cycles. You can see more information here with coconut battery. And as far as battery life itself, well, you can see yesterday, four hours and 57 minutes of screen active time. And I used 96% of the battery. The day before I had to charge it and had three hours and 48 minutes. It doesn't get me through the day. And again, that's why you really don't want it on your main device. Out of all the comments, only 30% reported good battery life, 70% reported poor battery life. But again, it's to be expected and should be updated by the time it releases with all the new battery features as well. When it comes to benchmarks, this is where it actually impressed me. So you'll see here, if we take a look, I ran this right after installing the re-release, 3,428 for single core, 8,420 for multi-core. Prior to this with iOS 18.5, I actually had to run it three times to get good results. This is actually pretty good. So well within the margin of error and no real issues here. As far as the overall experience and what you had to say so far on the early beta, let's take a look at some of your comments. JJWB11 said, iOS 26 beta 1 is surprisingly good for a first beta, but there are a lot of unpolished things. Namely, when my iPhone forgets how to render, render liquid glass and just removes the elements from the screen. Also using the spatial photos on the lock screen generates a lot of heat and battery drain. ECD LED V training said, I installed the iOS 26 and had to downgrade to 18.5 again because of many issues. I couldn't open my banking app and didn't like the new glass background. The notifications were on the wrong place and my phone didn't ring when a call came in. I didn't like the whole looking of the 26 version. Dentist KK said, iOS 26 Dev Beta 1 on iPhone 16 Pro is surprisingly better than expected. Definitely some bugs are here and there, but nothing major to hamper usage apart from the phone getting heated up while normal usage, thus affecting battery. About an hour less screen on time compared to 18.5. Nevertheless, like the overall design, it needs optimization and hopefully upcoming betas will work on stability and thermal management. Ethan Dallas 2460 said, I have had every beta one for every iOS release since they started doing it. This has to be the buggiest I have ever had. Alaska Heston says, loving the first beta of iOS 26 on my iPhone 16 Pro. There are definitely visual glitches and the liquid glass design is definitely unpolished due to it being an early beta seed, but I'm sure it will get better with the next couple of betas. It definitely drains a lot of battery and the device runs hot whenever I try to play with the wallpapers. Also, the phone app crashes when trying to access a contact card. Anyway, great way to start. Can't wait to see the next betas. Amir Ali Awarda, hopefully I'm saying that properly, iOS 26 is much smoother than what I thought it would be. It does run very hot though, and there are occasional stutters. Now again, if you've been thinking about installing iOS 26 beta 1, I would say typically if you have to ask, don't do it. At this point, it's not stable enough to use on your regular device, especially if you have critical apps. And I would recommend using it on an older device, maybe a secondary iPad if it's not crucial to your work. And so that's everything so far with iOS 26 beta one and also iOS 18.5. The overall experience seems to be pretty good for a first beta, definitely needs some refinement, and we definitely need an update to iOS 18.5. But I think those things will be coming very soon. Again, let me know how it's going for you. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.